Welcome, Jason, to the to the space of legendary fathers. Hello. Hello, George. Uh, it, it's Jorge, but it, Jorge. yeah, a, lo a lot of my dad calls me George too. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I hear, I know uh, a little bit from you. Somebody referred me to interview you, and uh, I hear that you have been working in New Zealand uh, with this field of man, uh, working with man in our work and. And I'm glad to have you in this episode. I know also that you're you're a father. I don't know so much about the the extent, and I was I wanna like put it on the give you the floor for yeah like bringing bringing up uh, how how is it for you to become a father? How did you become a father? How is your journey with fatherhood? And if you could tell us a bit about how that's been, if you can tell how that's been for you. Thank you, Jorge. Um, yeah, it's a big, it's a big topic for me. I, I've had a lot to do with different um, aspects to being a father and to becoming a man, and and I've worked alongside my father um, a lot. I worked alongside him for ten years in a rites of passage program for boys and their fathers. And I am the father of a 16-year-old boy and a 17-year-old uh, boy who was born uh, a girl and and two stepsons, two bonus sons um, with the partner that I have now. So I have uh, who are who are 18 and uh, 20. So I have four teenage sons and uh, my father died in 2020. And I'm in the midst of creating a documentary film about the journey with him around rites of passage, around becoming a father, around men's work, uh, around being a father. And the rites of passage is called, at the moment, Fathers and Sons. So this, this space is really alive. It's really big for me. I feel a huge sadness with it. And, um, yeah, the sadness is really sitting there right now with the the challenge and the pain of of having having sons waking up to to their life, to their to the possibilities, to the challenges, to the addictions, to the numbness, to the the pain of the world. And um, yeah, as I'm on this journey with um, healing work and and really, wanting to get to the reality of, of who I am and uh, who I am as a man and, um, and really deconstructing that in especially the last year of deconstructing what it is to be a man who, who, what was the show that, that was going on and, and who am I now? And, and how can I be in the space with my sons as I see them building their boxes and going into, uh, yeah, strategies to stay alive and survive, and yeah, so this is this is some of what's alive for me with your question. It's I could keep going, and I'm curious to stay in connection with you and and follow this space. Yeah, yeah, it's super that you're bringing up this connection with fathers and sons. When I first created this space, it, I, I, I want, it was for fathers. And then sh shortly after a son showed up in the space, like like being part of the space, like I'm not, like somebody that's not a father, uh, but that he had, he's doing father research, uh, Michael, Michael Michael Carlinger, and and he, I interviewed him also, and the space opened up for, sharing the legends about your father so it was so relevant and it was so right there and i'm glad that it's coming up here now with with this generation that you work with your grandfather with your with your dad the grandfather of your children and and yeah i'm turned on about this this documentary i briefly 
saw it. I didn't have a chance to to see it. I I still have the the tab open. And it's not it's not done. It's it's really in process. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a complex space to tell the story of my father. Also, because he died of motor neuron, he took his own life because of of being uh, with motor neuron, and and it was a courageous act. It was, um, and so there's this real bittersweet love for him and the last part of his life, and and how to be with legacy. He did a lot of men's work. He did a lot of men's healing work, men's gatherings, and did a lot of his own his own journey of pulling himself out of patriarchy and out of out of unconscious masculinity and and to walk alongside him and now to be doing my own journey in the in the in the walking alongside my partner who is also very strong in in possibility management and really in this exploration of uh, what is it to be a man in reality today with the patriarchy collapsing and still so imprinted in me and my sons yeah um, i really don't know how it goes and yeah. it's scary and sad yeah and, I'm, and just so much anger there too like so like when i scratch the surface of my sadness just this 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 boiling pool of of anger at the the unconscious patterning that's come down through the, the generations, just survival of the fittest. Yeah, that's really yeah. shit. Yeah, I see. I see now two two places where this space could go. I don't know. Maybe there is more, and I'm just seeing these two right now. One of them will be about how the process of if you will tell us the the story of how you became a father. Uh, yeah, with this um, perspective of seeing, uh, like, what was it for you really to to be there, to be that father, and to see your your son being born, or your yeah your son being born, and and the the other side that I could see this coming is like if there's like legends about your father that you want to tell in the space. I don't know what's most alive for you right now. I see both being like, I could go either way. Yeah, I mean, the, the first inspiration when I heard about your calls was around this telling the story of becoming a father. And, and yeah, so I'll start there. And, and the, like, I, I became a father unconsciously in that I was with a, um, a woman and we were um, really enjoying being together and, and making love a lot and, and at the same time, um, I was being really creative in my life and I was clear that, that the world was a complex and chaotic space and that I didn't want to become a father. I was busy doing what I was doing and I did not want to become a father. And so when she phoned me um, and, and said that she was on the toilet and she'd done a, a, a pregnancy test and that she was pregnant, and we'd been together about eight months and it was really like a real lot of fear. And, and for maybe a month, nearly two months, I was in this place of really not, not knowing how to, how to process this and really to, how to make a decision in a good way. And so the, the kind of, the, the time of me really becoming a father, was, you know, I, I had this, you know, my partner at the time said, you know, like, if you are not sure, then you need to be 100% no, if there's something going to be changed with this pregnancy. Or, you know, ideally 100% yes, she wanted to to move forward with the pregnancy. And I went into the hills and sat around a little fire, and and I and this the fire really spoke to me of follow the light, like that this spark, this being, had come um, through us, and 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 really um, 
and through from a place of real passion and love and aliveness. And, and I, like, I remember the day that, that, that she, he was conceived and we, my partner and I had been um, separately on rites of passage camps. She had been away holding space with women for mothers and daughters, with women becoming, with girls becoming women, 13 to 15 year old girls becoming women with a program called Tides. And I, then we had one crossover day and then I had gone away with the, with the men and I'd been with the, with the fathers and the sons and boys becoming young men and really looking at this space. And we came back together and we had all this passion about rites of passage and about young people and waking up and stayed in bed all day making love. And, and this was the day that, that my, my son was conceived. And so to, to be sitting around that fire and to, and to be really <laughs> feeling this like, fuck, this fear and um, about what it meant to become a father, knowing all of the challenges with all these fathers and sons that I'd been with and my own journey and, and just the, the fire just so quietly and powerfully said, just like, follow the light, like follow the light of this being. And, um, and so, yeah, really like a turning point. And I have gone and sat in that place with my son and, and told him this story of, of, the, of the, 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 the little fire that, that told me of his light. Yeah. So that, that point of sitting around that fire is really where I became a father. And, um, and then ongoingly, you know, I had a phone call, video call with him two days ago. He's in Amsterdam on his own. And he was really sad and really scared and and to be able to talk to him about how he was feeling and just hold space and feel my sadness and my fear of of what he's up against in his life of how to not numb himself as an 18 year old and the panic and the fear of holding space for his life and yeah i became a father again <laughs> then I just, sitting there with him and, and knowing that I can't do anything. I can just listen and encourage him to center himself and feel his feelings, take care of his bodies, that I love him. Yeah. It's an ongoing journey becoming a father. Yeah. Yeah, I feel touched by this possibility that you're bringing. Uh, you just became a father two days ago. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And that is yeah, that is this ongoing ongoing thing that doesn't doesn't end just the, the moment they're born or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the and I feel touched by this message uh, follow follow the light. And uh, so how did it go then Do you, you was it this clear decision that you made? Uh, that okay, I'm I'm gonna yes, be a father for yes, this. Yes, absolutely. This guy. Yeah, and it, and and the weight the weight of it, like the to bring a being into the world as it is today, with all yeah. that's with all that's um, changing. Yes. And collapsing and um, and and growing. Um, yeah, I live in a a community in New Zealand where there really is a focus of of wanting to do something like different than modern culture. And, and my parents moved here when I was 14. So I have a, a 34 year history with this place. And, and so there's like, like bringing my children to this place and having this real like utopian vision of like, ah, we're going to run rites of passage and, and I'm going to bring my children up with like homeschooling and close to the land and we'll grow organic vegetables and, and all this fantasy of how we could change the world. And, and the real like collapse of that as, as my kids got to school age and I tried to start a new school and spent two or three years with some others like wanting to start a school and, and really just running up against how hard that is and, and making money and and having 
like quite an addictive personality and falling into drinking quite a lot and and numbing myself with the pain of of just not knowing how it goes and and my marriage breaking falling apart and this this ongoing pain of what it is to have pulled apart the family around my children and see my younger son of just so angry and and numbing himself so much and just i don't know how to, to connect with him he's just closed the door on me and and i'm just looking so much at what is it in me that that i can shift so that he feels and yet there's a part which is also like i don't want to make it like somehow there's a like a tough love or a sword love as a father of like like it's not going to happen by somebody handing it to him. And he's really like waiting for life to, to be handed to him and the pain of that too. So this, this, this journey through like the utopian yeah. vision, this fantasy of living in, in a hippie community in New Zealand and, and then the real, ah, oh, fuck, it's, it's still, it's still hard. And now here, like 30 years later, I thought, wow, okay. Uh, it's, it's still worth, it's still worth being here. And I'm still holding the space. And, and this house now has, you know, my two bonus sons. So there's four sons that kind of, they don't live here, but this is their anchor. Yeah. And it's important for me that there is, there is a, another possibilities that there's something else possible than just go get a job and a mortgage and, and watch Netflix and, you know, drink alcohol <laughs> and la, 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 la. Yeah. yeah. So you were already in that community when you became a father, where were you, when you gave, when I was gave 14. birth? And, wow. Okay. So my parents moved from Canada. <clears throat> from Kamloops. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's like, 15 hours from here right on okay so I, I, tell me, I, tell me I a little bit away and I came back when my kids were born and I spent yeah. first sort of five years of their life back here at the community built a house was doing the rites of passage work with my father and then my marriage was breaking down so we tried my wife left and then I followed her. We went and lived in Amsterdam for a year and then came back because of my father's illness. And then his health went down over five years and our marriage broke up and yeah. And then my father took his life and in and around that time I got together with, with Sibylla, my current partner. We've been together for five years now. She also lives here at the community. This is where we had originally met. Yes. And so I'm back at the community again. I have been for about four four years now. Yeah. Will, will you tell um, about the experience of first of going through the the pregnancy part, like the, this part of that about nesting? How how was it that for you as a father? This nesting part, and and especially in a in an intentional community where you are right now, where it's like you have it's like a hub outside of modern culture and yeah. how did that go for you those next few steps yeah i moved in um with my she was my daughter at that time um when she was three months we moved into my into my dad's house so we really um were in this like grandparents around um and It was a really beautiful time of having having my father and his partner really close. My mother lived in the community too with her partner, and we just had a lot of grandparent. And then I started building a house next door. I built a I built a house next door. So for maybe nearly nearly three years, we were really right in my dad's house in the community and really living this this dream of of having the grandparents close and doing rites of passage work and men's work and living in the community and i really i really enjoyed that time and there was there was some challenge with my partner at the time my wife at the time and 
and I was playing out so like looking back on it now with the clarity that I have now I can really see how I was playing out like really wanting this fantasy of um of being in like yeah this sort of utopia in a way yeah. and and under, underneath there was really some real fears I was not um I was not really making some quite big shifts my father also was somewhat of a drinker an alcoholic um and so we would drink, you know, and and numb, yeah, some some of that. But yeah. at the same time, he was also really driven with the men's work and with doing rites of passage work. So there's yeah. two sides to his legacy of like all of this that he created. This really like an ongoing legacy of work with rites of passage, and in the background is like the cost of how he drove himself along, you know, numbing out some of his own fears and so on with alcohol. Yeah. And yeah. So this was this kind of shadow in the background, but also this real vision and, you know, wanting to create a democratic school and creating a charitable trust and putting in an application and really wanting something different for my kids as they grew and looking at this thing around self-directed learning and how to really hold a space where they can really find their own beings and their own impulses. And yeah some really beautiful times there. Yeah. yeah, you're bringing in this piece about this living in the utopia idea of what it will be like, this, uh, this hippie fantasy. Yeah. And I, I relate because I, 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 yeah, up until a few years ago, I was living in that, that space too. And I see how, how dangerous it is or something. It's like, it's like not being in reality. And then uh, what I sense or what it was for me was this uh, automatic thing for creating resentment, that I could use it at any moment to create resentment, to create a hate or disgust or this uh, rejection for my partner, for my community, for the world, for money, for anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's like swinging, swinging all the way the other way, you know, from one. So I'm either in modern culture and it's totally the other way. And then, ah, I can hate modern culture and I can blame that for my problems and stuff. And somehow, like I'm still in this place right now of just deconstructing that and getting somehow somewhere in between where it's like, OK, there's gifts on both sides. And actually, how, how can I hold space for my sons from, from reality of really like not saying, hey, modern culture is bad or hippies are bad or whatever. It's just how can they be in contact with their own self? How yeah. can I be really, really there with them, with you? Yeah. And I feel sad because there's still so much like trying that goes on there. Yeah. I don't know how it goes. So I'm just pull, pulling pulling off the layers. <laughs> yeah. I can put in. I have this, um, I want to go a little bit closer, closer to the bird. You told me that you built a house. And, uh, how, were you there for the birth of your children? Were you there to witness that, that portal? And will you tell me about, about how that went? Yeah, both of my children were born by cesarean. And yeah. I, I was really very involved with, um, with the pregnancy, with really being um, right there with my partner of, of um, how to support as much as I could of being kind of like the outside extra arms of her, of her, of her, of her impulses. And um, so, yeah, it, it was, it was a beautiful experience scary also i was the only man in the room so i feel glad about that that the you know the the surgeon and the and the nurses and everyone they were all women mm. and and i have a like wow well, yeah so that i mean we were home over like two hours two and a half hours drive from the hospital and a, quite a long road so golden bay where i live is somewhat isolated and and my partner's waters broke maybe 10 days early and so mm -hmm. there was this okay you know 
I went to the local little doctor's little doctor's office and they were like, you need to go to Nelson. So we drove over the hill. It was this big full moon and really in this place of just sort of like just holding baby in and going and, and seeing how what was going to happen. Ideally, there was going to be a birth over the hill. And um, after a little bit of laboring, there was really this choice of um, either you can you can keep trying now, we can induce you, and it's possible that you have a vaginal birth, but um, it's unlikely. It's just really not far enough down. You're not enough dilated. Or we can go into a cesarean now with you being um, actually quite well rested, and it'll be really quick and easy healing. And so we chose to go this direction. And like within an hour and a half from making that decision, my daughter was in my arms. It was really like, wow. And and what really struck me in that time was, if, you know, if we'd had a vaginal, if my partner had a vaginal birth or or whatever, one way or the other, having a baby is a really big deal. Like it's a really scary, really um, beautiful. And I can, I can, I can still remember very much the the surgeon like lifting, lifting, Ty as she was called at that point out, and then holding her for the first time and cutting her cord, and the sense of um, the shift from, uh, yeah, being one to being two, from yeah, and. Yeah, I, I loved really being there with 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 both of my children uh, as they in the first few years. It was really like that was that was really natural place for me. It's much more confusing being a parent of a teenager. That part was really simple. It was really like being to being and really listening and being close to the land and food and mother and body and yeah, I really loved that. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, super. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And, and uh, yeah, I'm having this, this picture of you guys driving and yeah, driving and going to this this <sighs> yeah. yeah, I also feel like the, the sadness from my own emotional sadness about um uh, being born a C section. Uh and yeah, I was born a C-section. All my siblings were, and, and yeah, that's. I don't know. It's like I guess it's it's how is it like I, experientially there is this different this uh, way of vaginal birth. You go through this canal, uh, and it's like like the the, vag the vagina like compresses the the body in certain ways that that it, it kind of like compacts it together and puts it together and. I have this story for me that, that I, I wasn't put together. I wasn't ready to be born, something like that. So, yeah, my mother was induced. Uh, she wasn't ready. It was just an appointment at the doctor's office. She went to the appointment and then they induced her. Uh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and I, what's a life for you right now? Uh, like being a, because it seems like there there's still like a lot of deconstruction happening about being a father, about being a man in modern culture. And I guess there is this big question that I have right now too of this uh, the this gender, gender conversation. And I don't know if you have uh, some insight about it. It might be a big topic, but uh, I've also been in this question because I see it all around me of, um, yeah, this uh, gender, uh, like being like, yeah, like the, the kids choosing their gender, something like that. I don't even know how it goes, but it sounds like you, you like you, you went through that or that, that, that's something that's happening in your family, that your, your child was born a, a, a boy or with a penis and later on. Other, other way around. Okay. Yeah. She was born a girl and yeah. then she, she decided to to change she, she, she came out came out as as um as a boy he was 14. i 15. see i see yeah yeah 
and has uh, been on testosterone now for a year. And really is, is really like no questions really once once he sort of discovered it it was really like the light went on and there was there's been no question since so it's very it's like really curious like i i don't have any reference point for that in in my in my culture in my life but to be there and like to really see the clarity coming through him of i'm you know i've got a girl's body and I am, I'm a man and I want to be called a man and treated as a man. And, and I, I want, I want to, you know, start the shift physically also towards a man. I don't know if he'll go through, um, surgery. I, I'm not sure at the moment. He seems really happy in the fact that he's taking testosterone. His voice has totally changed. His energy has shifted quite a lot. He was telling me the other day that he's really noticing how he smells more. His temperature is higher, like his physical body temperature is higher. Yeah, it's really, um, it's really amazing being with him and how self-aware he is of, yeah, it's like his feelings, his um, different bodies, how much more present he is yeah and the, and, he, and he notices also this thing called this body dysmorphia um of the like his experience of his physical body doesn't match his um doesn't match his like his experience and his physical body don't match yeah he looks down and goes what the fuck i've got breasts it doesn't match for him yeah and um yeah, and, and it's all really just like being being with him is not a. Um, there was there was initially some some resistance and some fear that that he was like making his life more complicated, more difficult, and um, and also you know in in some of the you know um, information that I've had um, and other people that have spoken that I respect too about how there's a certain level of um, like avoidance or disassociation with reality to choose to be transgender, like um, as a way of being special or a way of being unique, you know, like I don't really want to be a girl because I don't want to fit in the girl box. So I'm going to, I'm going to be transgender. And to, and to be looking at, at him, Box, so he's changed his name and his gender and, and done it like so consciously. There's aspects to his awareness of self that are like so far beyond anything I ever was around his age or even now in a way, having questions yeah. around his life and how he adapts to other people and so on, that it's exactly what I'm doing. Like not talking to him about it and, and note it. And he talks to me about it and it's like, fire out. That's, that's stuff that I'm moving and, and, and with. And, and so just really inspired also with, with his level of awareness and just, that's what he's choosing. Right on. So yeah, I don't know how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, as we are closing, as we are coming here to the end of the of this space, do you have any, um, I don't know if you'll be advice or any gold or discoveries that you have uh, that you can share with other men or other fathers that are listening to this space, that something that you want to share with them, uh, something that you wish you would have had maybe when at the beginning of your fatherhood or something like this? Yeah, I mean, I feel scared about any sort of like philosophizing or advice giving or anything like that. And I feel, um, I feel really glad to have found the distinctions and feeling work. Like the, the, the distinctions of like feelings and emotions and 
and and anger work and and um yeah so i i love it that my sons have that as a possibility that they see that happening in their life and and it's not about having regrets but yeah i i feel sad that that i spent a lot of time numbing myself out because i just really didn't know what else to do and it was easier and yeah i i just really i really long for a world where men go slower listen more to their feelings and are less attached to being special or something or having to, like money yes yeah. thank you where where can people find more about you if you if you will share it, where you can find about this documentary that you're uh creating and how they can get in touch with you yeah so there are links on um my my strikingly site jason horton dot my strikingly dot com and yeah so there's basic links there needs a bit a little yeah. bit of updating but they can find their way to my documentary project which is called fathers and sons and they can find their way to the embodiment work that i'm doing with my partner embodied freedom and also to tui community and the work that we do here at tui and um and yeah possibility management new zealand amazing That's beautiful doorways amazing yeah i'll put it in the description of the of the video Yeah. And thank you so much, Jason, for saying yes to being in this space yeah. and for the work that you're doing. Thank you for opening up uh, this uh, this doorway into your life and for sharing, being open to share it with others. This is super cool and I super appreciate it. Um, thank you, Marque, with, with, with yeah, going to the next step of, of going into action. Not just having questions, but going into action. Yeah. May it uh, may it open doors for men to their hearts. Yes. Thank you so much. I'll I'll see you in the next space. Okay. Alrighty. Bye. Bye. Thank you.